Hello, welcome to Bradway TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Bring back Nelson Mandela. Bring him back home to Soweto. I want to see him walking down the street of South Africa tomorrow. Hugh Masekela released the song comprising these lyrics at the time that Mandela had spent 25 years in jail for conspiring to overthrow the government in 1962. From the lines of this song, it is clear that Masekela was trying to send a crucial message and most of his songs follow that path. Hugh Ramapolo Masekela was born on the 4th of April, 1939 in the township of Kwakuga, West Bank, South Africa. His father, Sumaselena Masekela, was a health inspector and sculptor, and his mother, Pauline Bowers Masekela, was a social worker. Masekela was mostly raised by his grandmother, who had an illegal bar for minors. He started out very early, playing the piano and singing as a child, and by the age of 14, when he saw the 1950 film, Young Man with a Horn, he began playing the trumpet. The first trumpet he ever owned was bought for him from a local music store by Archbishop Trevor Hodgson, the anti apartheid chaplain at St. Peter's Secondary School, which has been renamed St. Martin's School. He didn't stop at just buying him a trumpet. He also asked the leader of the then Johannesburg Native Municipal Brass Band, Uncle Sauda, to teach Masekela the basics of how to play a trumpet. He was a fast learner and in no time, he mastered the instrument. He became an inspiration to some of his schoolmates as he picked interest in learning how to play an instrument too. This led to the formation of the very first youth orchestra in South Africa, Hodgson Jazz Band. When Louis Armstrong, one of the most influential figures in jazz, heard about their band, he sent one of his trumpets to Masekela as a gift. He started playing music that revealed his personal experiences and detailed his life from 1954. It exploited such themes as agony, conflict, exploitation that South Africans had to deal with during the 1950s and 1960s. Even though those things were a source of pain to him, they became inspiration that caused him to make music about them and to spread political change. He painted very vivid images of slavery, apartheid, and the hardship that was being suffered by individuals with his music, calling attention of the right people to it and raising awareness without causing any outright trouble. With what he was doing with his music, he was able to reach a large population of people that also felt the same way but couldn't voice their thoughts. He joined Alfred Hubbard's African Jazz Review in 1956. The musical King Kong was South Africa's first blockbuster. And after a Manhattan Brothers tour of South Africa in 1958, Masekela ended up being a part of the orchestra for the musical. At the end of 1959, he formed a band with Donna Brand, Kipi Museki, Makaya Nshoko, and Johnny Gezi. They named the band the Jazz Epistles, and together they became the first African jazz group to record an LP. They made a great impression on people, and through the late 1959 to early 1960s, they performed to a record breaking audience in Johannesburg and Cape Town. He had to leave the country in 1960 after the Sharpeville massacre, which left protesters dead, and the government banned gatherings of 10 or more people and took the apartheid brutality to the next level. When he was leaving, he had help from Trevor Hodgson and some international friends like Yehudi Menuhin and John Dankworth. The latter got him admitted into London's Guildhall School of Music in 1960. In London, he got a scholarship to study in the Manhattan School of Music in New York. He studied classical trumpet there from 1960 to 1964. He played the trumpet and other instruments very well. During the course of his career, he was signed onto Mercury, MGM, Uni, Chisa, Blue Tom, Casablanca, Hesop, Verve, and Polygram labels. He founded Botswana International School of Music, BISM, in 1985 with his first workshop, Holding in Gaborone. That workshop still exists and continues as the annual Botswana Yearly Music Camp with the purpose of giving musicians from all backgrounds and of all ages the opportunity to perform together. Masekela taught the jazz class at the first workshop and on the day of the final concert, he performed. Some of his most popular songs include Bring Him Back Home, Grazing in the Grass, Chileche, Silema, the Co-Train, and Tumamina. He was nominated for three Grammy Awards categories. The first was in 1968 for Best Contemporary Pop Performance for Gracie in the Grass. The second was in 1989 for the Best Musical Cat Show Album for Salafina, The Music of Liberation. And the last was in 2012 for the Best World Music Album for Jabulani. He was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2005 by Channel O Music Video Awards and an African Music Legend Award by Ghana Music Awards in 2007. In 2015, he was given her honorary doctorate award, Doctor of Music, by Rhodes University. At the MAMA Award in 2016, he was given a Legend Award. He got married to Miriam Makeba in 1964 and they got divorced two years later. 
He has two children, Sam Masekela, an American television host, and Barbara Masekela, an educator, a poet, and activist. He died on the 23rd of January 2018 in Johannesburg at the age of 78. He was honored with a Google Doodoo on the 4th of April 2019, the day that was supposed to be his 80th birthday. As at the time of his death, his net worth was $1.5 million. He was a great influence to the face of music, especially jazz. Not only did his songs appeal to humanity, they also had political inclinations that passed messages across without having to resort to violence. He was indeed a music legend. What's your take on Masekela as an African musician? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be the close to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.